Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk a little bit about oscillators. I know we've covered it in lots of videos before, but oscillators are fun and they are one of the key components of any type of electronic circuit. Uh, clock circuits, digital circuits, whatever you're building, an oscillator is going to be probably a part of it. And what is an oscillator? Well, an oscillator is something that simply goes from on to off. So we're going to build a simple oscillator called a relaxation oscillator. And to do it, we're going to get the camera to focus. <laughs> and we're going to use an op amp. In this case, I'm going to use a TL072 because that's what I have around. But you can use any op amp that you want. And our supply voltage is going to be 15 volts minus and positive DC. Now, this is one of the easiest types of oscillators to design, and its oscillatory nature, how you like that phrase, is explained by the following principle. If we charge a capacitor through a resistor and then discharge it, we'll have a voltage that climbs and a voltage that declines. And it's going to, you know, we're going to use uh, a voltage divider to set a threshold. And that's going to cause the voltage to climb and turn on, decline and turn off. Are you with me so far? And this cycle is going to repeat. But to make it repeat, here's the key. We need positive feedback and an amplifier with gain of at least plus one. Those are the rules in making an oscillator. So, here is our op amp, right? So we're going to start with our capacitor. It's going to go to ground. Just like that. And then we're going to have a little bit of a load resistor here. I'm using 15k for all of these resistors. Okay, no problems with any of these. And this will be designated R1. Then, we're going to come out of here. Put another resistor going to ground. And uh, we're going to call this guy here R3. Should have read R3 up a little bit higher. Because that is going to come over here to this resistor and create... Our voltage divider right here so that's R3 and that's R2 and then through our out I'm going to put a current limiting resistor here which is going to be 1k that is going to fill feed an LED because we love LEDs LEDs are great when teaching electronics because they just let you show something is turning on and turning off and there is our simple circuit now, to power this circuit, of course, we need a dual voltage power supply. Lots of ways to do it. Pretend this is a bench power supply. There's our outputs plus, minus. There's our voltage. Well, we're going to use two of them, okay? Like this. Okay, so we're going to put this on a breadboard. There's our trough down the center. And then up here we have a blue rail and a red rail. And the red rail is going to be our positive. Then down here we have a blue rail. And another red rail, blue and red. Now this blue rail is going to be our negative voltage. And this red rail is going to be our ground. All right, we're not going to use this rail up here. Are you with me so far? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the positive. 
the positive voltage from one of our power supplies and we're going to bring it to the positive rail here and the negative is going to come down here to our ground now for the other one the positive is going to come down here connect to our ground and the negative is going to connect to our negative supply and that is going to give us our dual rail power supply other ways you could do it you could simply hook together uh, two 9 volt batteries to do it but I wanted to use 15 volts for this pretty cool and pretty simple now let's talk a little bit about the math involved in this so theory wise let's uh, let's draw a graph here this is zero volt this is plus 15 this is minus 15 and this line here this dashed line is going to be plus 7.5 and this dash line here is going to be minus 7.5 and that is this threshold voltage we've created here with our voltage divider so basically as the op amp um, swings through its voltage and you got a 50 50 shot if it's going to go positive or negative first doesn't really matter but it could go either way so let's say it starts out positive so it's going to go fully positive for a time then it's going to discharge or it's going to swap to fully negative for a time fully positive for a time you get the idea just like this ad infinitum but what's going to happen is because of our capacitor here and I'm using a 470 microfarads just to slow things down enough so that we can see it so what's going to happen here is we are going to start and we're going to charge up to this point then we're going to discharge down to this point back up to this point back down to that point that is the capacitor charging and discharging as this thing's flip-flopping all right still with me we're almost done it's not that hard now to find our threshold voltage I mean, it's not that hard to figure out since we're using two equal resistors that it's uh, half of them but the formula is actually going to be this our VR is equal to R1, I'm sorry, R3 over R3 plus R2 and is equal to V2 which is 15k over, you with me? What's it going to be? 15k plus what? 15k plus 15k which is going to end up equaling 7.5 volts pretty simple should we take a look at it in action all right there's our circuit there's our TL072 the uh, output is pin 1 negative is pin 2 positive pin 3 this is our negative voltage input, positive voltage. These three over here are for another op amp that we're not using. Now, this big resistor is simply our 1K current limiting resistor for the LED. Here is, uh, what number is that? This is R1. It's coming from the output and is going over to our capacitor which is discharging and then these two that little guy there that little guy there forming our voltage divider which goes back and provides our feedback all right let me switch everything on 
there it is you can see it charging up and charging down not bad it's a neat little circuit pretty simple you can make it yourself anytime you want I'm gonna shut it off so there it is if you need a simple RC oscillator now you know how to make one yourself we didn't cheat by using any ICs or Arduinos or Raspberry Pis we built it the well I'm sorry we did cheat a little bit we used an op amp but I'm not really considering an op amp an IC I guess you have to all right well I guess we did cheat a little bit I think I, I don't know I think of an op amp as an analog part not as a digital device what do you guys think let me know down below is an op amp an analog device or a digital device you know the difference right digital device is either on or off an analog device can ramp up and ramp down sure looks like a ramp to me so that's why I, I consider we didn't use any digital devices we didn't cheat we made it out of basic components so if you like this give me a thumbs up feel free to comment and share and don't forget to subscribe big thanks to all my patrons big thanks to you guys for watching and big thanks for you guys who leave crappy comments like you have no vision and you're only doing this to keep your channel going well Show me your channel where you spent three and a half, almost four years of your life to provide free electronics education to the world. Then you can talk. That's it. I'm out. Peace. I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. Dollar a month is all I ask and uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here. And there's a link to it down below.